Hey everybody, welcome to DEF CON 864. We're actually earlier than normal. Usually we take 20 minutes to go over any audio video issues that we have in setting up each space that we come into. Real quick, there's, for those of you who are new here tonight, it's good to see you all, uh, good to see some new faces, but for those of you who have been around for a long time, we do have a great presentation tonight from Nick, St. Nick, who's bringing us the CWE. Uh, let's see, uh, real quick, so we are not to be confused with the DEF CON conference that takes place in Las Vegas. We are a small subset group of that conference. Obviously, there's, you know, you can't have something this small and consider it to be part of that conference, but we do want to get that out of the way. The other thing that we are not is just a group of black hat hackers. We're just standard normal people. Almost all of us, if I'm not mistaken, work professionally within the information security industry in various roles, whether it's GRC, pen testing, or even the blue teaming defense side. So. If you have any of those kind of qualms or reservations, we'd be happy to talk with you after this is over. Uh, a couple of us are going to introduce ourselves as leads, uh, and if you want to get active and participate in the in the group, let us know. Uh, most of our interaction actually takes place on Discord throughout the month and throughout the year, actually. Uh, we're actually shaping up a pretty strong 2023 speaker schedule. I think right now, tentatively, obviously we're still waiting on some things to be locked in. We've got speakers or topics booked all the way into almost September at this point maybe pushing up if we can lock in a few more close to the end of the year. So if you are interested in speaking and uh, presenting, anyone can share anything that they're interested in. Don't think it has to be leap or super amazing or anything like that. It, it's just what are you interested in with technology and life, how those two intersect. Everybody wants to hear about that. So come share your hobbies, your interests. Uh, Nick's going to take some time tonight to go over uh, the presentation he's got on the screen right now. After that's over, we're going to have a little bit of a, a kind of a pause and a break, and we're going to split into a couple what we call villages or just small like-minded think tanks. Uh, the Red Team Village is going to be doing prox card or badge cloning for entry and access, things like that. So if you want to get a look at that. Truthfully, that could be of interest to anybody, regardless of whether you're Red Team or not. So if, if you put together facility uh, security and defenses in those lines, this would be really helpful for you. Welcome, everybody. Nick, I'm going to turn it over to you. Be careful. All right, so diving into it. Um, my talk today is going to be about CWE and mapping different controls, uh, which I'm sure the GRC people are very familiar with. <laughs> uh, and, um, yeah. Your screen's not sharing. It's not sharing Switch your Wi-Fi. Uh, did your Wi-Fi automatically switch to your flipper by mistake? <laughs> uh, I'm going over a. Uh, there you go. I'm going over a 4G hotspot on an iPhone 8 Plus, so it's a little old. <laughs> Maybe time for. It, it is. It really is. But hey, I got my money's worth. All right. So it's sharing now. Yep, you're good. Sweet. All right. So we'll dive in a little bit more about me since we just did introductions, but just a little bit more. Uh, 10 years in cybersecurity, uh, imposter syndrome all the time, because you know there's always more to learn and I always feel like maybe you're not quite there. Everyone ever. Yep, exactly. I am the oldest of 10 siblings. Uh, like I said, originally from California. Uh, came out here in 2006. Um, and graduated Greenville Tech in 2015 uh, with a uh, focus uh, on the networking concentration. So, to the first, uh, the first thing we're talking about is uh, minor CWE or the common weakness enumeration, which started in 2006. Uh, and to give some timeline on it, uh, CVE came first. So CVE was established around 1999, I believe, and uh, that is when they started tracking vulnerabilities. Uh, well, they started shifting uh, to needing some sort of framework, something to build off of this to further enumerate what each one of these weaknesses was uh, and how to categorize them, help it for software development and for tracking. Um, another example of uh, vulnerability framework was OWASP, and that started before uh, CWE as well in 2004. Uh, but again, just this need for further identifying and tracking these individual 
weaknesses, a way to have building blocks to be able to further explain what's wrong. So in my research, there's a ton of different terms and a ton of different tools. I don't know how this is looking up here. Is this okay? That's good. All right, cool. Um, I thought it was funny that CVE was originally enumeration, uh, but it became exposures. Um, you got CWE, uh, CPE, and CCE, which we kind of went over last time. Uh, not last time, but the time prior to that, when Ben was talking about hardening systems. Uh, and... OS and uh, the common attack patterns and enumeration and classifications. That one was new to me. I had not really seen that before. Um, but we'll dive into that one further. And then CVSS you know, for scoring and MITRE attack. There's just so many different frameworks and ways to explain or uh, map a vulnerability or a weakness or an issue or explain its impact. Um, and so I wanted to share this just show like there's a lot there, and I'm sure there's more than what I, I found in this little bit of research. Um, but breaking down, I wanted to use Eternal Blue as an example for how some of these map together, right? So you have a CV identification, a common weakness identification, um, what was CCE again? Uh, common <laughs> configuration enumeration, and uh, common platform enumeration. And so the common platform, right, is saying that SMB version 1 needs to be present for this to be vulnerable. Uh, a firewall could possibly stop this, right? Um, and so, again, it's building these building blocks that help explain the risk, right? Or not explain the risk, but explain the vulnerability. Explain why this is present. Uh, why this mattered to me and why I was interested in looking into this further is because I'm a penetration tester, right? I find a vulnerability, how do I explain that to someone else? How do I have a reference to say, hey, if you want more information, go here. Um, and so I started using CWE uh, when I found my first path traversal vulnerability um, in an application that didn't have a CVE. And so trying to figure out how to explain that to management to be able to say, hey, here's the weakness. There's no CVE for this. If you want to go make one, go ahead. But here's the, here's the problem. And here's what, what you need to look at to fix it. Uh, and so that, that's where I, I got pulled into this, well, well, why I got pulled into this. Uh, now, C, CWE has a top 25, because everyone's got a top list of something, right? Uh, so CWE bases theirs off of several different factors. Um, mostly, it's the impact of the CVEs that have used CWEs. So I know this is going to get a little weird. <laughs> But essentially, they map you know how many uh, CVEs had this particular weakness in it, and then what was the average score of all those CVEs that had this weakness. Uh, and so then using that as well as known exploited vulnerabilities um, was used to kind of calculate what would be the most important or most critical. So uh, I have a couple slides here, which is just the top twenty-five. I'll just go over these. I'll just go through them real quick. Um, but you can see the different scoring here, the, the leaps there are between the one, two, three, and the rest, um, as well as, you know, Kev, which is the known exploit, uh, how many, the differences there, the changes in rank. And there's a lot of just interesting ones, like use of hard-coded hard credentials is 15, which seems kind of high still, but... Hmm. So then I took that data and I threw it in Power BI for fun because I like Power BI. Uh, just to show the, the difference and I had feedback to make this grayscale and lebulum, so I apologize for not doing that before the talk. But um, the difference right between one and two, which is the furthest to the right, uh, and how, how much more impactful those are, just the top two compared to all the rest and how you can see how most of the rest can kind of fluctuate. Uh, you can see how it might bump year to year. Uh, number one and two are out of bounds rights and improper neutralization of input during web page generation or cross site scripting. Which cross site scripting, like, that's in a lot of stuff. You will find that all over the place. So, diving in further, how else can C, how, how else can CWEs be used, right? How else can 
uh, other companies or organizations use them to help build, build further building blocks and help with avoiding you know overlap and focus uh, for identifying those risks. So OWASP uh, adopted CWE, and so for the top ten for A01 or broken access control, you can see how they're kind of nested here um, because one's a parent, and the next one's a parent, and the next one's a, the child, and so. This, uh, the, I got asked this earlier, um, do the numbers correlate if they're children or not? They don't. The numbers are just when they were created. So the lower the number, the earlier they were created, but ultimately you'd have to go look at the actual structure to see where they fall in terms of the parent-child relationship. But they try to create a nested relationship to make it easier to identify where a particular one can be found, right? For path traversal, for instance. Um, there's multiple ways of doing path traversal, but where would you find that? And you would find that during following that down from improper limitation of path name to a restricted directory. Now, looking at this further, the KPEC framework, the MITRE ATT&CK, um, MITRE ATT&CK doesn't use CWE. They don't have that listed anywhere. They don't have common weaknesses there. Uh, but KPEC does. Uh, and they both can feature different or similar types of attacks, like Kerber roasting. But they just have different, a slightly different focus. Um, which is, again, odd because I feel like everyone's heard about MITRE ATT&CK at this point. But I hadn't heard of KPEC at all. And I don't know if MITRE's goal is to replace KPEC with ATT&CK. And I don't even know if KPEC's the right way to pronounce that, but that's how I'm pronouncing it. Is KPEC also MITRE? Yeah. <laughs> I, I actually used to work for MITRE. Oh, okay. And, uh, and there are about 18 different groups that do this stuff, and getting them to talk is yeah. virtually impossible. That's what it feels like <laughs> from the outside. Yeah. Um, now, the benefit is, if you know this, right, then you can kind of use the two to work together, right, to figure out exactly what, like, weaknesses are associated with curb roasting. Uh, and it's fun to see some of the, how these are listed, right? Like, yes, use of single factor authentication. The curb roasting is a weakness for that because, yes, if I get a ticket and I crack it offline and use it to log in, I've successfully curb roasted, but if MFA was there, that would have prevented me. And so different weaknesses are mapped to the actual attack. Um, let's see. Yeah, next one. Uh, so how MITRE explains the differences, because this is from their official page on why the two are similar but different. Um, KPEG could be helpful for threat modeling. So if I know what my application is doing, and I know the weaknesses I'm looking out for, then I can figure out, I can reverse that, right, and go from the weakness to the attack I want to try. I want to try to emulate this attack because I'm worried about this weakness. Um, so that's where there's the benefit of KPEG for helping with that simulation. There's also weird things that are covered by KPEG that is not covered by attack, like badge cloning. Uh, doing that is not covered in attack or CWE, but is covered in KPEG as a way of tracking that particular type of attack and testing it. So, a lot of acronyms, a lot of things to say, but. Uh, Will CWE help translate risk to management? Not necessarily, because the whole idea of it is it's a very base level technical explanation for the issue, right? So just saying, you know, we have this CWE doesn't explain what the actual impact or likelihood of that happening is, right? And so CWEs are helpful for the technical side, but not necessarily for going great to management with it. Um, and to do that, to get likelihood and impact, right, there's CVSS, um, which is the closest thing, but I, I personally prefer the OWASP model for likelihood and impact, um, which is just likelihood and impact, and, you know, the likelihood of low, medium, or low, moderate, and high, and very high. So essentially you can figure out how likely is this to happen, what was the impact, and then using a cross-reference to figure out, okay, then it's a high or it's a moderate. Uh, but with that, uh, what questions do you guys have for me?
I know this was kind of a quick talk. So you mentioned you use CWEs as a pen tester. Yes. Are you going to be uh, supplementing that in the future based off of what you've learned? Yeah. I might look to see if there's additional data to help explain why it was tested for with, with KPEC, for instance, or um, uh, I have used it for uh, you know, figuring out exactly which OWASP top 10 to use. Because um, it's easier to find, in my mind, the CWE because if I can know the particular path traversal technique I use, I can find the CWE for that and then work backwards from there. Um, and most of the time, uh, the CW website will actually have which technical controls also contain it. So that'll say like, oh, I'm part of the OWASP top 10, I'm part of number two. Um, so I, I didn't think of covering the actual website, I guess, but th there's some good data there too. Question, I've never heard of CAPAC. KPEC. Yeah, I, I'm calling KPEC. I don't know if that's yeah, I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but it's yeah. KPEC from here on forward, but uh, when you were reviewing those resources, did you see anything in the sense of when it was last updated or how often it's updated? KPEC looked like it was updated recently. Yeah, it, it's it's all so it's seems still active, yeah. There's there was 500 different KPEC uh, items. Wow. Uh, uh, and then. Um, there was over nine, over close to nine hundred, I believe, CWEs. Mm -hmm. so there's a lot of different, a lot of different ways to map stuff. At the end of the day, none of them will do everything you need. Right. I was trying to do an, uh, a security assessment when I started this job, and trying to figure out one framework to just <laughs> use for the assessment. It just was impossible. Do you think KPEC, not K-pop, but k -Pop, <laughs> Because you mentioned this isn't covered, which is more of like a physical security. Yeah. Do you think that's more of its focus? Well, again, it's more for, th it's if, so this is the weird part, right? Like, because I want to say threat emulation, but that's what MITRE ATT&CK focuses on, right? But what KPEC provides is more of a resource on how to actually conduct the attack. How to actually like step by step what's needed, what tools, where, where things are not necessarily with tools, but what, what's the process look like? What's required? Like they need an offline password cracker, they need this, they need that. Um, it's more general in that regard. It's not as specific as MITRE ATT&CK. Um, but it seems to be, it seemed to be maybe a precursor to ATT&CK? I don't know, it, it was, it was on. Well, that's it. Oh. Thank you, Nick. So I, I went out on KPEC's website, yep. and I thought it was interesting. When you go out to their homepage, it was updated about two months ago. You go out to their KPEC list, it was updated in October of 2021. Nice. So, you know, <laughs> under that might have changed, you know, farther. I didn't dig down into all the links off the page, but, you know. Even and the, it is funny too that when you go in there, the first thing it mentions is miter. <laughs> well, it's miter. You know, it's all miter. It's, it's, miter. <laughs> it's yeah, always been miter. Yeah. And even October of twenty one for these types of things is relatively recent, it, it, even though yeah. it really isn't. Well, again, because attacks more focused on the actual threat intel side of it, right. of like this is the current groups that are using this. KPEC's not focused on that. It's more so, oh, we came, this is this new attack pattern that we want to put in here, because that's the whole idea, right? A pattern of what this attack will look like from start to finish. Um, but they aren't going to track who's doing it or why. Or probably new exploits until they know the right. sequence of what the exploit's going to do to yep. help give you the defense. Yeah. 